Hi everybody. In this video, we're going to learn about a new statistic which will allow us to measure the variability of a distribution, and it's called the standard deviation. So today we're going to learn how to compute this new statistic and how to interpret it as well. So to start, we have some test scores here, and you can see that's a 50-point quiz, and some kids scored quite high. In fact, I have one score that's a 50, and I have one score that was quite low, and that's a 10. And if you look at the rest of the scores, they seem to be clustered pretty much around 30, and we can see that in the dot plot here as well. I have many scores that are quite high, a couple scores that are quite low, and the mean score here is 30, right smack in the middle. And if you look carefully, you see about half the scores are above 30, and about half of the scores are below 30. So what we want to do is try to measure the variability here. I see that big cluster of points in the middle, but I also see one high point and one low point. So here's how we do it. We're going to start by taking all the numbers and listing them in a table. They don't have to be in order. And individually, we want to think about how far are each of these data points above or below the average, which was 30. Well, if you look at the first couple, you can see at the first point, 24, that was minus 6. It was 6 below average. We get that by taking the data point and subtracting it from 30. The next quiz score, which is a 29, was 1 below average. It's a negative 1. The next quiz score of a 31 is one above average, and we do this for each of the data points. So you can fill this table in on your own, and we end up with all these numbers, and they're called deviations. They individually tell us how much above or below each data point is above or below the mean. Now the problem with this data set is we have all these positive and negatives. Think about if we wanted to do something collectively with these numbers. If you add them all together, you have positives and negatives, they're all going to add up to zero. So this column on its own doesn't really do much for us. So what we'd like to do is somehow be able to summarize these deviations. So to make it a little bit easier for us to, to think about this, what we need to do is make all these numbers positive. There's a couple ways we could do that. One way is we could use the absolute value, but another way is we could square all the numbers. And algebraically, it turns out that squaring numbers plays pretty nice with algebra we want to do in some later statistics courses. So this third, uh, this third column is going to be to take all of the numbers, all the deviations, and square them. So the negative 6 becomes a 36. The negative 1 becomes a 1. And you can fill out that table like this. So now I have a, a table of numbers that I can do something with. Because I have these nine numbers here, and what would be natural to do to summarize them is to take the average of those numbers. And we call that the mean of the square deviations. And here I've done that for you. That's 99.11. Again, the way I got that is by taking the average of all nine of these numbers in the third column, which are the deviations squared. Well, in statistics, that number has a name. That's called the variance. The mean of the square deviations is called the variance. And the standard deviation is just the square root of that. Keep in mind that the numbers in the third column were achieved by squaring the deviations. I'd like to go back to that column again, and we can do that by square rooting. So the square root of the variance is called the standard deviation, and here we can do that. The square root of 99.11 is 9.96. That's the standard deviation. We call that S. And also notice my pro tip. Statisticians professionally actually do this calculation a little bit differently, and we won't mention a slight difference here. So we have this number, 9.96, that's the standard deviation. Well, what does that number mean? Well, here's the interpretation of it. Some students we know were above average. Some students we know were below average. But in general, student scores were typically 9.96 points away from the mean. So a higher standard deviation would mean that people are, on average, farther away from the mean less clustered data. Smaller standard deviations tend to indicate data that is more cluster, clustered, closer to the mean. So in this video, we learned how to uh, calculate the standard deviation and also how to interpret it. 